This is a project about thermal analysis in Fusion 360. We're going to use the uh, thermal option in the simulation um, drop down menu here. We're going to simulate something and uh, find out about how heat flows. Um, the specific project I'm thinking of here that I'm kind of based some of this on is a project where a student was trying to build a 3D printer for chocolate and if you are making chocolate you need to heat it to about 50 degrees Celsius to melt it and then you want to get it to about 28 degrees uh, Celsius to temper it um, to get it to take on the right properties. So I'm going to try and design something that uh, takes the chocolate from 50 degrees to 28 degrees. I'm actually going to simplify the problem slightly and instead of looking at a tube with chocolate in the middle I'm just going to look at a solid bar um, and then I, you know I could introduce the complexity later. I'm going to assume that we were working with a one inch pipe so that's 25.4 millimeters um, circular pipe and I'm just going to look at a 150 millimeter length of that. So I want to find out how much if um, one end of this pipe contained warm chocolate how much cooling I could expect to the other end and just to simplify the problem I'm looking at a solid bar. So this is about as simple a geometry as we could hope for and I'm going to assign this to be uh, just the default stainless steel. Uh, stainless steel is um, used a lot in the food industry because it's a hygienic material. Um, so that's all ready to go now. What I'm going to do next is start to run a simulation. Uh, so if I say simulation, uh, it'll automatically give me this option for a new study because I haven't got a study yet. And I'm going to choose this thermal option here. Um, so you've probably done studies before where it was finite element analysis for static structural analysis and you needed to specify uh, loads and materials and constraints. Here we've got a few different things to specify. I've said this is stainless steel and I'm going to apply two different um, thermal loads. Well they're defined as thermal loads here. The first thing I'm going to do is to say uh, at this end of the, the pipe, or in this case the bar, I want to imagine that the warm melted chocolate is there. So I'm going to say there's a kind of infinite reservoir at 50 degrees. So that end of the pipe can't change temperature, it's just always going to be at one temperature which is 50 Celsius. The second thing I'm going to do is to apply another thermal load, this time to the outside face of the bar. And what I'm going to apply here is a convection. Um, so I'm saying the um, there'll be air transfer moving around near the bar and that will transfer heat away. Um, there aren't that many inputs to choose but one of them is the convection value. Uh, I found a couple of sources for that 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 might be useful. Uh, there's one uh, just finding it over here. Here's a, a heat transfer coefficient. Uh, it's got the same units as the thing that we're working in so I think it's the the right kind of number and this is about convective airflow in engineering toolbox um, and I have found there for higher velocities you'd be looking at numbers 20, 30, 40 watts per meter squared Kelvin. Um, there's also perhaps slightly more relevantly uh, in this website called Engineers Edge they've got a bunch of different convection numbers. This one here looks about right. Um, if we've got a 30 degrees C temperature difference, a number is about 5. And I've seen that in a couple of places. I don't know exactly what number to use, but I'm going to use that 5 watts per meter squared Kelvin with an ambient temperature of 20 degrees. And I'll say OK. Uh, and I think that's everything that I want to know. Um, I've specified that this end's going to be at 50 degrees and the bar itself is going to be 
cooled by convection. And if I hit solve, uh, I'm just going to solve this locally. It should be pretty quick because it's not a terribly complicated case. There we go. Um, so we can see I've got the 50 degrees C that I specified on this end of the pipe and it cools along the length of the pipe. That's predictable enough. And by the end of the, the pipe, which here is a bar, uh, it's just under 39 degrees C. Um, so that's pretty good, but I said I wanted to try and get down to 28 degrees C here. So I'm going to say finish those results, come out of the simulation and go back to design. And I'll save this under a different name. Uh, it was copper bar one, so I'll call it copper bar two. Uh, sorry, it shouldn't have been copper bar. It's stainless steel. I was experimenting earlier with different materials. Uh, I'll save it as stainless steel bar one. And then I'll also save it as stainless steel bar two. Uh, and I'm about to fiddle around with that. What I'm going to do is put in a really rudimentary heat sink on this. Um, it won't be a, a sort of clever thing at all, but if I just try and increase the surface area, we'll probably lose more heat. Um, so if I select a plane 50 millimeters along, uh, and I'll say OK to that. So I've created this new plane, and then I'm going to sketch on that plane. You'll see the idea in a second, I think. And I'm just going to make a square um, this is going to be the kind of shape of my heat sink and maybe I'll also project uh, that so that it's clear what we're working with is is the thing attached onto the outside of the pipe uh, and I will say OK to all of that and finish sketch and then I can extrude that sketch. Uh, I'm just going to say one millimeter. Um, or maybe let's make it two millimeters just so it's not so thin, it's fragile. And I'll say, OK. Um, so there we go. We've got greater surface area now to try and get rid of some of the heat. Uh, I'll construct a couple more of those. Uh, that was at 50 millimeters. So let's do another one at 60 millimeters. OK. Uh, sketch on that new plane there uh, and this time I can project the things that are already drawn sorry not clicking that correctly one two three four five edges and I'll say okay finish the sketch and extrude that again two millimeters and I'll do one last one constructing the plane at 70 millimeters this time so it's equally spaced just for regularity uh, say okay um, and create a sketch on that new plane and project in same thing again. Say OK. And uh, extrude that one, two millimeters. So now I've got something where it's the same setup as I had before um, with the, the bar, which is going to be um, 50 degrees at this end and cooled by natural airflow. But I've got this sort of heat sink a heat sink is just a way of trying to get rid of some heat and one way I can do that is to increase the surface area of the object um, and so uh, that's what I'm doing here with these plates or fins or whatever you want to call them. So now let's have a look uh, if I go back to uh, well I'll save this uh, and I'll go back to simulation and I'm going to start a new study Again, it's a thermal study. Um, I think my plan was that I apply a load at this end of 50 degrees. So we're going to try and set it up exactly the same as before. 
50 degrees is good. And then I want a convection load. This is slightly trickier to do. I want to select every face except the ends of the pipe. Uh, so I'm going to choose select all faces, drag that box out and click. And then I get everything. And then I hope here I can choose to disable that face on the end, uh, which is face 28. And I think this one's already disabled because it's got a fixed temperature, so it can't be, um, um, there can't be a convective cooling on it. So by doing that, choosing just the uh, two ends of the pipe not to have the convective um, cooling, everything else has the convective cooling, uh, I've set it up, I think, as it uh, as, as physically realistic. Um, again, I'm going to choose that value of 5 watts per meter squared Kelvin. That seems like a kind of conservative number. With all of this, I'd only trust the results to a limited extent. Um, I, I'm more interested in knowing a little bit about the design of heat sinks than in specifically believing the exact numbers I get out. Um, you'd want to test experimentally to make sure that this value was about right as what you were choosing. Okay, so I'll say okay uh, and I will now go to solve that. If you remember before the temperature it cooled it to was 38.89 um, degrees and now what we've got, ah, interesting, the coolest point is now on the actual heat sink rather than uh, on the pipe. But if I go to inspect and create a point probe and look at the temperature there, temperature then is actually now uh, 28.4 degrees, which is pretty much exactly what I wanted. Uh, I was aiming for 28 degrees, so that heat sink has sort of worked okay. Um, I think I can say okay and just um, leave that as it is. Um, so that's an idea about how you can use thermal analysis within Fusion um, to design. What we'd like you to do next, or what you could go on and try next, is to try and minimize the volume of this uh, heat sink. So at the moment, if I just go back to uh, design, I've got a heat sink that works okay, but if I look at this body and I look at its properties, the bounding box for it is 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters by, well, it, it has to be 150 millimeters because that's the um, length of the, of the bar. But I th want you to try and aim for 28 degrees as a temperature output at the end, but minimizing this bounding box. So trying to find ways to get surface area in a smaller volume. And uh, yeah, have a go at that and see how you get on.